access your free language gifts right now before they expire. First, the Having a Party PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like, would you like a drink, guest, dessert, and more. Second, must know phrases for rejecting invitations. This one minute lesson will teach you phrases like, sorry, I already have plans, I'm tired, and more. Third, summer plans conversation lesson. Go travel, relax at the beach, stay at home and sit on the internet. You'll learn how to say these and other summer plans in your target language. Fourth, must know Father's Day vocabulary. Can you say Father's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the summer season writing workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the must know summer words and phrases. And you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. Download it for free right now. And sixth, tired of apps that just teach you random words? With our innovative language learning app, you learn through conversations and start speaking in minutes because our conversation lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download it for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Korean consonants are very different from the English consonant. So I know you have a lot of questions and this is one of the common questions that I always receive. So today I'm going to introduce how to pronounce this basic, aspirated and tensed consonant. Before starting the lesson, what are basic, aspirated and tensed consonant? Let's look at this aspirated consonant first because, well, my students usually don't have any problem pronouncing these aspirated sounds. So I believe you can pronounce these sounds very well too. So as you can see from the name, it's aspirated consonant, which means you use breathe, your breathe and air a lot. K, t, p, t. <laughs> Q, t, p, t. Yes, these are aspirated sounds. And these basic consonants are like this kyok, tigut, piu, chut, shut. Yes, these are basic consonants. These sounds very similar to aspirated sound. That's why I'm sure you are confused at least once, right? So let me introduce you what are the differences and I'll give you some tips how you can pronounce them correctly. Let's look at Tensed consonant now. Tensed. Mm. You can see from the name, right? Tensed. Yes, you need to tense. You need tensed thought to pronounce these sounds. These sounds. And these are mm, one of the sounds that my students find difficult. <laughs> So today's lesson will be very useful for you too because I'll introduce all, all these sounds in this one lesson. So what is the tip? <laughs> Firstly, uh, aspirated sounds are so easy for you because you can pronounce this. So let me skip this part. Let me skip this part. But let's look at basic first. Basic first. My professor um, explained one interesting experiment so they recorded one sound for example like this sound this k sound and they just lower the pitch and interestingly even though it was originally this sound korean people native korean people like me recognize that sounds as a basic consonant Ooh. and what happens if they make the pitch higher then interestingly, that was exactly the same sound, but they recognize as this sound. So yes, please remember, these sounds are very similar to this sound, but the big, one of the biggest difference is the pitch. Lower the pitch to pronounce these consonant correctly. <laughs> and another big difference is cha -cha 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 -cha, this tense. Yes. You need higher pitch plus you do not use a lot of air, a lot of breathe to pronounce these sounds. So I'll show you 
many many examples today so please remember the peach and the air peach and air peach air peach air peach air yes this is the most important part of today's lesson so please remember that so i prepared some examples so let's practice it together so what are the differences between kyok kyuk sangyeok mm, they sound very similar right for example kul 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 it means oyster 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 or it can also mean a cave but <laughs> cool next we have this cool cool is from cool english word cool for example she's very cool coolhada coolhada <laughs> now we have honey it's very sweet right cool 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 these sounds very similar right but please pay attention to the pitch now cool 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 do you see the difference? And do you hear the difference? Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, we use a different pitch. Cool, cool, cool. So cool has the highest pitch. And second point is the air, right? The breathe, air. So to show you the amount of the air and breathe, I prepare Jan this tissue. So look at this. Cool. Cool. Yes, I use some breathe air. This. Cool. Cool. I use a lot of air, right? Do you see the difference? Cool. 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 So when I pronounce cool, 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 I use a lot of air, right? Now let's look at cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, the tissue doesn't move, almost doesn't move. Cool, 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 cool. Yes, so to pronounce this tense sound, I don't use a lot of breath. I use breath, but I try not to burst, burst, like cool, cool, cool. I try my breath come out weekly cool 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 let's practice with jan the other next consonant tigut <laughs> tigut sangdigut what are the differences jan here are the words that i prepared first i have tal 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 it means moon moon in the sky tal now we have tal Tal, tal. It's a mask. It's traditional mask. Traditional Korean mask that we wear when we do traditional dancing. Tal, tal, tal. Now we have a daughter. <laughs> daughter is tal, tal, tal. Now let's look at the pitch. Did you notice I used different pitch? Tal, tal, tal. Tal, tal, tal. Tal, tal. Tal, 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 tal. Yes, tal has the lowest pitch. Tal, middle. <laughs> tal, highest pitch. Tal, tal, tal. Now let's look at the amount of the air and breath that I'm using. Jan tissue again. Tal, tal. Next, tal, tal. Oh, do you see the difference? Tal, 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 tal. Yes, tal use more air. And now, tal, tal, tal. Oh, tal. Tissue is almost not moving. So, tal, 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 tal. Okay, so next is John this piup piup sang piup. What are the differences? John. So here are some example words. First is pul pul is fire. Pul pul means grass or glue. Mm. Next is pul pul. It means horn. Horn. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the pitch. 
first. 불, 풀, 불. 불, 풀, 불. 불, 풀, 불. 불, 풀, 불. Yes. Peach is different. The next thing is the amount of the air. So, chararan. I have tissue for you to show you the amount of air that I'm using. So, first, pull, pull, pull. Next, pull, pull, <laughs> pull. Ooh. <laughs> Next, pull, pull, pull. Again, pull, pull. Pull, 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 pull. So pull, 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 pull. Pull, pull used the most air. Pull, the sound burst, the air burst. Boom. <laughs> okay, the next sounds are this. Chit, chit, sang chit. What are the differences? Here are the examples. 자다 means to sleep. 자다. <웃음> Next, 자다 means to be cold. For example, um, your beer or orange juice can be cold. 자다, 자다. Next one, you tried some food and it's very salty. 자다, 자다. Yes, to be salty. 짠. Look at this pitch. Here, pay attention to this pitch. 자다, 자다. 차다, 차다, 짜다, 짜다, 차다, 차다, 짜다. Do you hear the differences? 차다, 차다, 짜다, 차다, 차다, 짜다, 차다, 차다, 짜다. Pitch is different. Next is the amount of the air. 짠, this. 차다. 차다, 짜다, 차다, 차다, 짜다. Do you see a little differences? Basically, this 자, 차, 짜 doesn't use a lot of air, so this tissue is not moving so much. But still, 차다 use much more air than 자다. 차다, 차다, 짜다, 차다, 차다, 짜다. Here are the last sounds. Shoot and sangshu. What are the differences? Zan. First, we have sada. Sada meaning to buy. You buy clothes, you buy vegetables. Sada. Sada. Next is sada. Sada. It means to be cheap. Something can be cheap. It's just one dollar. Wow, it's cheap. <laughs> sada. Sada. Peach. Sada. Sada. 사다, 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 사다. These are different. Another thing is this. The number. Another thing is the amount of the air. Sada, sada. So the tissue is moving, right? Sada. This. Sada, sada, sada. Tissue is not moving. Sada. 사다, 사다, 사다. So definitely, 사다 used more air than 사다. 사다 used 사다. The tense sound used the least air. So today we look at the differences between this basic, aspirated, and tensed consonant. So how are they? <laughs> Please practice these sounds and pay attention to pitch and the amount of the air. If you have the tissue at home, this will be very useful too. <laughs> Today, I picked questions related to winter in Korea. Here's the first question. What are some popular winter activities in Korea? Here's the first sport is ski. Ski is skiing. In English, to ski is a verb, but in Korean, ski, ski is just a noun. So, to use as a phrase, we say 스키를 타다. 스키를 타다. 타다 means to ride. To ride on ski. This is how Korean people say. 스키를 타다. It means to go skiing. 
And in Gangwon-do area, there are a lot of ski resorts. So if you're interested, check it out. Next is snowboard. Snowboard. Yes, it's snowboarding. And can you guess what verb I want to use with this word snowboard? Yes, I use tada. Tada meaning to ride. Because basically, you have to stand up on snowboard. So in Korea, we think you have to ride <laughs> on snowboard. So we use this verb. Snowboard를 타다. Snowboard를 타다. So it means to go snowboarding, to do snowboarding. Okay. And another thing is 눈썰매. 눈썰매. Which is something I love so much. 눈 means snow and 썰매 means sledding. So 눈썰매. Well, it's snow sledding. And you can use this word without 눈 too. So 썰매, 썰매. And we use the same verb to write, which is 타다. As in 눈썰매를 타다. 눈썰매를 타다. It means to enjoy or to do, to go snow sledding. 눈썰매를 타다. Next is 아이스 스케이트. 아이스 스케이트. Ice skating. Yes, ice skate is a noun. So to use as a phrase, you need to use a verb. What verb? As you can guess, is 타다, 타다, to write. Ice skate를 타다. You can find lots of ice skating links in Seoul or in other cities too. So ice skate. Next is 등산. 등산. 등 literally means climbing and 산 means mountain. So climbing a mountain or hiking is 등산. It's a noun. So to say go hiking or do hiking, to hike is 등산을 하다. 등산을 하다. 하다 means to do. So it literally means to do hiking. 등산을 하다. Korea is very mountainous. So 70% of the land is actually mountains. So there are many mountains that you can climb. So try 등산. This is Korean people's favorite, favorite, favorite sport. 등산. And another thing that I want to recommend is this. 온천. 온천. Yes, it's hot spring. And long time ago, Korean kings <laughs> went to hot spring when they don't feel well. So 온천. Onchon. Try some good onchon spots in Korea and enjoy it. <laughs> onchon. And you can use it as onchon을 하다. Onchon을 하다. Yes, we use the hada meaning to do. Hada verb. Onchon을 하다. And next we have 얼음 낚시. 얼음 낚시. 얼음 낚시. 얼음 means ice and fishing means 낚시. So 얼음 낚시. And Korean people eat fish <laughs> there after uh, 얼음 낚시. So if you want to try some fish, check it out. <laughs> 얼음 낚시 is very popular in Korea in the winter. 얼음 낚시. And we use this word with 하다 verb again, as in 얼음 낚시를 하다, to go or to do ice fishing. Next is 대관령. 눈꽃축제 대관련 눈꽃축제 대관련 눈꽃축제 Yes. Do you want to see the beautiful scenery covered with snow? Then this place would be perfect. 대관령 대관령 is name of the city. 대관령 And 눈 눈 means snow and 꽃 means flower. So it literally means snow flowers because when it's Covered by snow, it sometimes looks like flowers. So, 눈꽃, 눈꽃 is snow. 축제 means festival. So, 대관령, 눈꽃축제. This area is very cold, so it's always, always, always snow. <laughs> so, 대관령, 눈꽃축제. And 오색별빛 정원전 would be a nice place to go too. 오색별빛 정원전. 오색 별빛 정원전. So 
오색 오 means five. 색 means color. So it literally means five colors. So is there only five colors? No, <laughs> there are more colors. But 오색 오색 is just an expression. It means like colorful. There are many colors. And 별 means stars, and 빛 means light. So 별빛 starlights. <laughs> and 정원 means garden. 정원 and 전 means exhibition. So, well, I tried to break down the name word by word, but, well, it's just the name of the festival. So, Lightning Festival of the Garden of Morning Come is the English name. Uh, as you can see here, you can see lots of illuminations and lots of decorations. So, if you go at night, it will be perfect. Here's the second question. What are some popular winter street foods in Korea? First thing is, 붕어빵, 붕어빵, 붕어 is the name of the fish, and 빵 means bread. So it literally means fish bread, and it's fish-shaped bun. And inside, there is red bean paste. Yes, that's the basic one. But these days, there are many different flavors too, many different uh, ingredients, such as chocolate or custard cream, etc., etc. So if you're interested, please try it. Korean people love it. And it's not so expensive. I think you can get two 붕어빵, two, two 붕어빵 for just one dollar. Next is 호떡. 호떡. 호떡 means Korean pancake. And inside there are brown sugar with some nuts. And I love this one. 호떡, 호떡. Well, the brown sugar is the basic one, but there are many other tastes too. There are some 야채 호떡 too. 야채, 야채 means festivals. Or um, there are 씨앗 호떡. 씨앗, 씨앗 means seed. So I think that will be very healthy. <laughs> so check it out if you want to try it. And next, we have this fish cake, which is 어묵, 어묵. In Korean, omu. And good thing about omu is, Jan, when you get one omu, you can get this soup for free. Not just once, you can get twice, <laughs> three times. But usually, people get just one cup of this soup. And when it's very cold in Korea, this soup saves. <laughs> this soup always saves my life. So I love omu with this soup. And the next thing is steamed bun. Steamed bun in Korean is hoppang, hoppang. Again, the most basic one is pat, pat, which means red bean paste. Or there is pizza hoppang too. Pizza, pizza is pizza. And in Korean, we don't have Z sound, so it's not pizza or pizza. It's just pizza, pizza hoppang. Or there are many different flavors too, like 야채 호빵. Remember 야채? Yes, 야채 means vegetables. Or there are also curry tastes, or many, 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 many different tastes. I love 호빵. <laughs> Next is 군고구마. 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 So 군 means roasted. 고구마 means sweet potato. So 군고구마. Here's the last question. Are there any holidays in the winter in Korea? Let's start from 동지. 동지 is winter solstice and it has the longest night. And it falls on December 21st. And next is 크리스마스. 크리스마스. Yes, it's Christmas Day in Korea. And as you can guess, the date is December 25th. Please remember, it's not a family holiday in Korea. Christmas is usually a romantic holiday. So this is a day for couples. Christmas, Christmas. And not many Korean people are Christian. Of course, there are many Christian, Catholic, uh, but not everyone <laughs> celebrate this day uh, religiously. So this is just a normal holiday, normal happy holiday for Korean people. And still, young kids 
wait for the Santa Claus for a present. And next thing is 겨울 방학. 겨울 방학. 겨울 means winter and 방학 means vacation. So, if you take a winter vacation from your work, is it 겨울 방학? Nope. This 겨울 방학 is only for students. So if you go to school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and even university, yes, you will have vacation from school, but as a normal worker like me, I don't have winter vacation anymore. So please remember this word is only for students. Then next we have 송년회. 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 송. A little means you welcome. 년. 년 means year. And 회. 회 means like a party. So it literally means it's a welcome earring party. <laughs> New Year is coming, so you welcome the party. That is 송년회 in Korean. And in English, it can be like year and party. So usually I meet with my friends and we had good food or we go somewhere together. <laughs> 송년회, also a lot of companies have this kind of party. 송년회. Next, we have 졸업식. 졸업식 in the winter. I know in many countries, you graduate in different months, but in Korea, we graduate in December, January, February in the winter. So 졸업, 졸업 means graduation. 식 means ceremony. So 졸업식 literally means graduation ceremony. 졸업식, 졸업식. And next we have 신정, Happy New Year. So 신정 is Solar New Year's Day. It falls on January 1st. 신정, 신정. And of course, it's a holiday. So people don't work. But the thing is, December 31st is a normal day. <laughs> so everyone, everyone in Korea works on that day. Only January 1st is a holiday. January 2nd, of course, we go back to work. So 신정 is Solar New Year's Day, and then we have Lunar New Year's Day, which is 설날, 설날 in Korea. So 설날 is a big holiday. We have three days holiday, and in that day, uh, we meet our family and relatives, and all the relatives, where our parents give some 세뱃돈. 세뱃돈 is New Year's pocket money <laughs> to kids. So unfortunately, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not, a <laughs> I'm not so young, so I don't get this 세뱃돈, this pocket money anymore. But if I have a really young uh, nephew, <laughs> then I have to give the money. But I don't have nephew now, so I don't <laughs> give money to them yet. But yes. <laughs> and this day falls on Luna. January 1st, which means the date changes every year based on the uh, solar calendar. So um, I don't know what the day will be next year. You have to check the calendar. Then next is 정월 대보름. 정월 대보름. 정월 대보름. So it's the first full moon festival. And 정월 means a new year. So first month of the new year. 대 means big. 보름 means full moon. So it's big full moon. So on this day, we uh, look at the big full moon and make wish. And we have food and traditional, some like games stuff. But honestly, we don't celebrate this day anymore because it's not a holiday. It's just a normal day. So people go to work, we go to school, so we don't celebrate this day anymore. But still, it was a very important traditional holiday in Korea, but we don't celebrate it. Too bad. Last one is Valentine Day. Valentine Day. Or some Korean people say Valentine Day. Valentine Day. But actually, Valentine Day written like this is the correct form according to the dictionary. But I think more people say 
Valentine Day or Valentine Day. <laughs> what Korean people say. So you will see a lot of variations. It's simply because it's not a pure Korean word. It's from English words. So a lot of people pronounce it different way. So it's a Valentine's Day, as you can guess, and it falls on February 14th. But please remember this Valentine's Day is a little bit different from the one in your country. So only female, can you see this image? Only female prepare chocolate for their boyfriend or their lovers. And guys don't have to do anything. <laughs> They confess their love on different day, which is White Day, which uh, is in March. Yes, so uh, this day is for men. and But these days, some people, some kind, some sweet, nice boyfriend prepare chocolate for their girlfriend too. But originally, this is a day for girls who prepare some chocolate for guys. So it's Valentine Day or Valentine Day. You will see both of them. Hi everyone, welcome to Ask Kajin. My name is Kajin. 안녕하세요, Kajin입니다. Korean grammar. Here's the first question. Do I need to learn grammar to speak Korean? As a teacher, I would say yes. Yes, if you learn Korean grammar, that will actually make your life easy. Imagine you learned one phrase from Korean drama, one of Korean dramas, and you learned this phrase, 가자! And the subtitle was like, let's go, let's go. Okay, now you learn how to say let's go. If you don't learn grammar, well, you learn this phrase and that's it, that's it. But if you learn the grammar, and if you know how to form these kind of phrases, just by Replacing the verb, you can make thousands of phrases. Now, let me show you some example. Do you know ka, ka is from kada, meaning to go. So ka basically means to go or go. Cha, cha, cha means let's. That's why kaza means let's go. How was it formed? First, get the verb stem and you just put cha at the end. For example, you have 먹다, 먹다. It means to eat, to eat. And what is the verb stem here? Hmm, it's very simple. Korean verb always ends with ta 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 at the end. Just remove ta and you only have 먹, right? 먹, 먹 is the stem. So the verb without ta is a stem. 먹. Bok bok is a stem. Now we get the stem and let's just put cha at the end. Cha bok cha bok to eat. Cha let. So bok cha means let's eat. By learning this grammar, now you just need to replace this verb stem and make thousands of Korean phrases. Kaza bok cha boja. Let's watch. Or what verb do you want to use? Eat cha. That meaning to read, so let's read it. See? <laughs> so actually, learning grammar sounds hard, but actually, 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 learning grammar will make you speak more Korean. Here's the second question. Is Korean grammar difficult to learn? I don't think this question has an answer. It depends on the person. If someone is a Japanese speaker, Maybe Korean grammar is very easy because Korean grammar and Japanese grammar has many things in common. And if someone is a Turkish speaker, well, I heard in Turkish there are some particles. So they can understand Korean particles more easily. And for them, Korean grammar would be easy. But if you are an English speaker and you only speak English, I would say, yes, Korean grammar might be hard because Korean and English are very different. First, the word order is different. English is SVO language, subject, verb, object. For example, I like apples, I like apples. But in Korean, while well, the order is different, Korean is SOV language, so subject, 
object, verb. 저는 사과를 좋아해요. 저는 I 사과를 apples 좋아해요. Like this is how we say it. So as a beginner, you might be confused. Like oh, the word order is different. And also in English, there's no particles like subject marking particles. And object marking particles, topic marking particles, but there are some particles like that in Korean, so that might be difficult for you. But, well, good thing is in Korean, we don't have, we don't have genders for the words like verb, adjective, or nouns. We don't have genders. And also our tense is so simple, so simple. <laughs> and another good thing is we don't really use plurals. For example, it's candy, one candy, candies, candies, it, the spelling changes. But in Korea, well, you don't really use the plural forms even though there are many candies. It's just candy, 사탕. If you really want to say the plural form, then you only need to put 들 after noun, like 사탕들, candies, 책들, books. But we don't really use it. For us, being plural or singular is not so important. So in Korean, I think some grammars are really easy for you. We don't really care. We don't even have the articles like a book, an umbrella, <laughs> like or the. We don't have that kind of thing, so you can ignore them and just say a noun. So there are some easy part and difficult part. So it's a to you, it depends on the person, but if you're a beginner, don't worry too much. <laughs> I really want to encourage you <laughs> as a teacher, don't think about the difficult part. See the bright future only <laughs> at first, because when we speak Korean, we actually uh, omit a lot of parts and use the simple grammar. So. At the beginning, you can use, you can only use the easy grammars. So don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Here's the last question. How many tenses are there in Korean grammar? The first tense that I want to introduce is present tense. It's a, o, yo, yo. A, o, yo, yo is present tense in Korean. By the way, yo, yo. You can be omitted if you want to say casually with your friends. So it can be a o yo or a o yo yo, which is standard polite. And present tense is very, 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 very useful because for the future, when you talk about future, you can use present tense. I go to school. 학교에 가요. 학교에 가요 it means I go to school. But if you say 내일 학교에 가요, I go to school tomorrow, then it becomes future tense. How easy is it? And it can also be present progressive. For example, what are you doing now? Someone is calling you and say, what are you doing? 지금 뭐예요? 지금 뭐예요? What are you doing? And I say, 밥 먹어요. 밥 먹어요. 밥 먹어요 means I'm eating. I'm eating. And I'm using present tense, but it can be present progressive. I'm eating. I'm eating. So present tense is very useful, which can be used for present, present progressive, or the future. So how simple is it? <laughs> Next tense that I want to introduce is past tense. Yes, it's at, od, yo, so, yo. At, od, yo, so, yo. Yes, it's a past tense and you, you, you can be omitted if you want to Say casually. So it's up to you. If you talk with your friends, remove you. And if you want to speak politely, put you at the end. So it's a past tense. Another tense is this. Future tense. 을 거야. 월 거예요. 월 을게요 can be used for future tense too. But the basic main future tense is the first line. 을 거야. Or 을 거예요. This 거야 is a casual form and 거예요 is polite form, polite form. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. 
In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Mino, si, onel nai si ga otteo? Onel nai si ga toyo. Nai si ga mani toyo? Anio, mani an toyo. Nail nai si nen yo? Nail nai si nen chuoyo, grigo piga wayo. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Top da. To be hot. 덥다, 덥다. 비가 오다. To rain, to be raining. 비가 오다, 비가 오다. C. Mister, Miss, Mrs. C. C. 많이. A lot. 만이 많이 오늘 today 오늘 오늘 내일 tomorrow 내일 내일 춥다 to be cold 춥다 춥다 날씨 weather 날씨 날씨 Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. 민호 씨, 오늘 날씨가 어때요? 오늘은 날씨가 더워요. 날씨가 많이 더워요? 아니요, 많이 안 더워요. 내일 날씨는요? 내일 날씨는 추워요. 그리고 비가 와요. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask for something in a store. First, let's look at some examples. 그거 주세요. 여기 있습니다. 물 주세요. 여기 있습니다. 바나나 주세요. 여기 있습니다. Let's practice. 지금 가게에 있습니다. 멀리 있는 물건을 달라고 하세요. 여기 있습니다. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with an item, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. 그거 주세요. Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask if a store has something in stock. First, let's look at some examples. 우유 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. 사과 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. 후추 있어요? 네, 여기 있어요. Let's practice. 지금 가게에 있습니다. 
소금을 달라고 하세요. 네, 여기 있어요. 이번에는 우유를 달라고 하세요. 네, 여기 있어요. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with an item, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. 사과 있어요? Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. In the next minute, you'll be challenged to ask the price of something. First, let's look at some examples. Let's practice. 지금 가게에 있습니다. 여러분 옆에 있는 물건의 가격을 물어보세요. 1,500원입니다. 지금 커피숍에 있습니다. 커피 가격을 물어보세요. 3,000원입니다. How did you do? You can consider this practice exercise successful if you were able to answer in the given time, completed a pattern with an item, and used the sentence pattern featured in this example. Cake 얼마예요? Try this practice exercise again if you want to improve your fluency or skill in any of these areas. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of specificity and knowing what you want. If you don't know exactly what you want from the language you're learning, then chances are you might fail. Sounds harsh, but it's true. In fact, not being specific with what you want is the number one mistake beginner language learners make. And that's why today you'll discover how being specific transforms you into a better language learner, how to change your learning approach and speed up your progress, how to apply these tactics with our learning system, and much more. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Having a Party PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like would you like a drink, guest, dessert, and more. And second, the Summer Season Writing Workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the must-know summer words and phrases, and you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever.
And here are this month's updates for our language learning system. Learning pathways now include a journey widget, which shows your overall language learning progress, the next item widget, which shows you the next lesson to take, and your overall grade for the pathway. Just access one of your learning pathways on your dashboard to see these changes for yourself. And there's also the brand new Help Center to help answer and resolve any issues that you might have. Just click on Help Center and FAQ down in the footer menu of the site. The power of specificity and knowing what you want. Part one, the power of specificity. Think back for a second. Was there something you really wanted to buy when you were a kid that you had to save up for? Maybe a game or a toy? Chances are you eventually got it, and the main reason you were able to get it is because you knew exactly how much you needed to save, and it was a matter of time until you saved up for it. So what does this have to do with learning a language? Well, because you had a specific price to aim for, you were being specific about what you wanted. This kind of specificity is a powerful way to reach almost any goal, including learning a language. How exactly? For example, think about the kind of New Year's resolutions that people set every January. Resolutions like, I want to learn a language, or I want to become fluent. These goals tend to be very vague and unrealistic, right? And these same people quit one week into January. But it's much easier and faster to reach more specific goals. Goals like speak for three minutes in your target language, or learn 100 words in a month. Why? That's because you've defined the progress. You know exactly what you're looking for. Three minutes, 100 words. Kind of like the price of that one thing you really wanted as a child. So having that specific number in mind is crucial, and you'll always think about it. You'll always know how far off you are and when you'll hit it. Whereas becoming fluent someday, well, what does that even mean? And how would you even know you reached it? It's hard to be obsessed with a goal when there's no specific point to aim for. So without a specific number, you'll never know what you're aiming for. And this brings us to the second point. Part two, the power of knowing what you want. Do you know what you want from the language? Think about that for a second. You might be tempted to say, yes, I just want to speak and understand everything. But you're still being vague, which is the number one sign of not knowing what you want. And the truth is, most beginners don't know what they want from the language either, aside from some vague goals. They'll get a textbook, download an app, and watch YouTube videos, just passively take things in, but their progress will be slow. They're not looking for anything specific, so nothing really sticks except for a few words. But let's say you wanted to know how to introduce yourself in that target language, so you know what you want. And then it's just a matter of mastering all the phrases for introductions. You'll learn it fairly fast. Same thing if you want to be able to talk about your family. Same thing if you want to master a specific grammar point that you still don't quite get. And once you've mastered this specific piece, you can go on to the next one, and you end up mastering more and more of your target language, all because you're being specific and know what you want. Now, all of this sounds simple, but it's not a beginner tactic. It's something that comes to you with time and experience. As mentioned, most beginners don't know what they want and rely on their apps and textbooks to guide them instead. That's just how we all learn as beginners. We don't know enough to start asking questions. But there are ways you can start being specific and intentional about your approach. Again, one of the best ways to make progress in your target language is to define what that progress is and be super specific about it. For example, learning 100 words in a month, speaking three minutes in your target language, or mastering a specific grammar point so you can use it freely in conversation. And the reason for that is, because you have a specific goal or number, you know exactly what to look for, whether it's reaching 100 words or three minutes. And without a specific number, you'll never know what you're aiming for. So if you want to get a bit more specific with your learning, here are a few things you can do. Part three. How to apply these tactics. One, set small, measurable monthly goals. For example, learn 100 words in one month. Finish 30 lessons inside of our learning pathway in one month. Send one message a day to your Premium Plus teacher. All of these are specific. Two, ask questions and note down specific points you don't quite get. 
The fact is, you'll always come across words or grammar patterns that you don't quite get. So note them down and ask questions whenever possible. This will help you come up with specific items you'd want to tackle or master within the language. You can always ask us in the comment section of the lessons or your Premium Plus teacher if you're a Premium Plus member. Three, similar to number two, if you're learning with an actual teacher, always prepare a question to ask, even if you can't think of a good one. This puts you in the habit of being proactive and looking for specific points you want to learn, clarify, or practice. Otherwise, it's like coming to class, taking notes and leaving, and then forgetting it all later. Four, take time to think about what you'd like to accomplish specifically with the language. For example, if you're learning for a specific reason, like travel, then give yourself specific goals, like learn how to ask about prices or ask for directions. It doesn't have to be anything big. In fact, the smaller and more specific it is, the better. If you want to learn the language, but are still struggling with making time to sit down and learn and making language learning a routine, there is a quick two minute solution to your problem. The two minute hack for learning and easily sticking with it. And in this guide, you'll discover one, the two minute rule and why that's all you need to get a routine going. Two, how to learn the language in just a few minutes a day. Three, which language tools you can use, including free ones, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So, why are two minutes all you need to get started? First, you may already be thinking that two minutes aren't enough to learn anything. And you're not wrong, but that's not what the two minute rule is all about. The two minute rule comes from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And the way it goes is, if you want to form a new habit or routine, you should do it for just two minutes a day. Why? Well, those two minute rules are all about practicing showing up and making language learning super easy to start. So pick something easy that you can do for two minutes. And we'll reveal a few ways you can learn for just two minutes in just a bit. If you can show up and put in two easy minutes consistently, you now have a routine that you can improve upon. Now you can learn a bit more challenging things past those two minutes, and now you have a solid routine going. In other words, the two minutes act like a gateway routine. Do the easy stuff for two minutes. If you can master showing up and doing two minutes, then you can move on to the more challenging things like grammar, reading, or drilling vocabulary. But if you never master showing up, you'll be like the millions of language learners that set a New Year's resolution and failed it three days later. Now, how can you put in just two minutes a day? If you're learning with our system, you can. This is a free service that sends you new words every day, improves your vocabulary, and you can easily spend two minutes reading through the word, the examples, listening to the pronunciation, and saying it out loud. Not quite two minutes, but it comes close. Our three minute lessons are a lesson series for absolute beginners, where you learn conversational phrases in just three minutes and start speaking the language right away. And you'll find the pathway for these lessons in our lesson library. Just look for vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. You'll find hundreds of lists for common topics like greetings, talking about weather, everyday life, must-know phrases for conversations, and much more. And you can spend two minutes picking up new words or saying them out loud. The dialogue tracks are 10 to 30 second tracks with just the lesson conversation. So if you wanna to listen to native conversations or just review a conversation from a previous lesson, you can easily spend two minutes listening to one on repeat or several and train your ear and get accustomed to native speech. We email out freebie cheat sheets every month. So if you're on our email list, you should be getting them. And just spend two minutes reviewing the words and phrases on the cheat sheets. These cheat sheets are a great way to learn a bit of language in just a few minutes a day. 
So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you're learning the language, then you already know that spaced repetition flashcards help you learn words fast. But what if you use them for phrases and sentences too? You'd be able to speak way more because that's how we all speak, through phrases and sentences. How to boost your conversations with spaced repetition flashcards. And in this guide, you'll discover how to do just that. You'll learn where to unlock hundreds of free phrase lists, how to master phrases fast with spaced repetition flashcards, and bonus learning tricks built into our flashcards. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So, if you want to master sentences and phrases for conversations with spaced repetition, the best places to start are our free vocabulary and phrase lists, which you can find in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. Just look for lists that contain phrases such as the 10 lines you need to introduce yourself, top conversational phrases, daily routines, and much more. Then select all the phrases, click Add Selected Words to Flashcards, and then New Deck to create a flashcard deck for these phrases. You'll need premium access or a free lifetime account with our free 7-day premium trial. Now, in the same vocabulary drop-down menu, go to Flashcards, and you'll see your deck. Just press Study to start drilling the phrases. And the way spaced repetition flashcards work is, they track your progress and space out your learning over time. So if you know a phrase now, the flashcards will show it again in two days, then four days, then eight days, and so on. Once you're done with a study session, that's it for the day. And all of this takes just a few minutes. Then your flashcards will remind you when to study again and start introducing new phrases while spacing out the ones you already know so that you never forget the phrases. And so you're actually mastering the phrases that you can use in actual conversation instead of just learning words. With our flashcards, you can test yourself on how well you can remember or produce the phrase, read it, or understand it. So, if you go to Settings, you can choose from Listening Comprehension, where you hear the phrase and the goal is to see if you understand it, Production, where you see the translation and the goal is to see if you can remember and produce the phrase, and Recognition, where you see the phrase in the target language and the goal is to see if you're able to recall the meaning. You can pick one, two, or all three. Practice multiple skills to get the phrases to stick even better. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you want to learn the language fast, there are some little known learning hacks that you can use with our system. Five learning hacks that you didn't know about. And in this quick guide, you'll discover one, how to understand and pick up on every word with the read-along method, two, how to improve your speaking and pronunciation with one tool, three, how to immerse yourself in native dialogues, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Ever listen to a conversation between native speakers and wish you could follow along with a transcript? Well, you can. In fact, listening and reading along is a popular learning hack for mastering a language. You pick up on every word, you improve your listening skills, reading skills, and engage multiple senses at once, which improves recall. And you can do just that with our lessons. On every lesson page, you get the complete word-for-word -word transcript to read along with. Shadowing is another popular language learning trick, and it's where you repeat what you hear as a way to improve your speaking skills. 
So as you're taking our lessons, you can shadow the lesson conversation. And you can do this easily with the line-by-line -line audio dialogue, which breaks up the conversation into individual lines. Just press play on the audio to listen and then repeat. You can also use the pronunciation practice tool to compare yourself to native speakers. Just press the microphone icon, record yourself speaking the line, and then you can hear how your pronunciation compares to the native speaker. The dialogue tracks give you just the conversation of the lessons, no translations, so that you can review the conversations without retaking lessons. And if you're learning with our app, you can just set the dialogue tracks on autoplay and immerse yourself in different types of dialogues, boost your listening skills, and drill all the conversations into your brain. Just go into the settings on the app, and in autoplay, make sure autoplay is on. Turn on dialogue, turn off the other tracks, also set play next lessons to on, and the app will do the rest for you. Now, if you're not sure whether you're getting the most out of the lesson or not, well, if you follow our lesson checklists, you'll walk away knowing more of the language guaranteed. This premium PDF can be found inside the PDF download section of the lesson and gives you bonus tips to follow. Just print out the checklist and fill it out with every lesson. The word bank is kind of like your extended brain, where you can save words and phrases that you come across to the word bank, so you review them later. Just look for the word bank in the vocabulary menu on the site. But what's cool is you can also create printable study sheets for your words and phrases as well. Just click on Printer Friendly Version. You can also click Export Word Bank. If you've organized and labeled your words into categories, such as verbs and adjectives, you can select that label and export it as a PDF. Then print the file out. You can write on it and keep it as physical study material. So, if you want to learn the language and get access to these learning tools and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.